Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. To my loyal listeners, I hope you're all having a great day. To anyone new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. Do me a favor, if you enjoy this video, smash that like button and consider subscribing. Also, if you want to hear me talk about true crime using the words that say it like it is, you know, the M word, the S word for unaliving, then please consider a membership or a Patreon membership. If I can get enough of those, then I don't have to rely on the ad revenue and you can get tea of bed crime stories uncensored. Now with all that out of the way, let's dig in. Yesterday, a local Tennessee YouTuber named Terry Lynn was out searching for missing teen Sebastian Rogers in a wild, woolly area with a lot of brush and some water. Terry spotted a pair of black track pants with white stripes in an area beyond a body of water. Terry did the right thing. She didn't touch the pants. She stayed close to them and she called the authorities, who later came out to beg them and tag them. And ironically, the male officer who was out there refused to get into the water because he had a new crease in his pants and he didn't want to get wet. But when his supervisor showed up, she dove right in and went and got the pants. She then begged them and tagged them. Want to get a job done? Call in the gals. Terry said they appeared to be a small size. Well, the pants turned out to be much ado about nothing. The authorities are saying that they have nothing to do with the case of Sebastian Rogers. I wanted to talk a little bit more about the photograph, the one showing a child who looks a lot like Sebastian. Sebastian and that was taken in North Carolina. Sebastian's father, Seth, believes the photo is legitimate and that it is Sebastian who's standing next to a column. Now, I heard another YouTuber state today that Seth is in North Carolina. That is not true according to a source close to the family. Seth Rogers is not in North Carolina. It has also come out that a woman believed to be Katie Proudfoot's 54-year-old mother, Frances Suzette Rosenbaum, who lives in Virginia, is both an RSO and resembles the blonde woman in the photo that was taken in North Carolina. But guys, it seems like every middle-aged blonde woman who wears her hair up or in a bun is being said to look like the woman in the photo. So this is just people speculating. Don't take it as fact. Rosenbaum was charged and convicted in 2002 under Virginia Code 61-8D-5, which is the essay by a parent, guardian, or person in a position of trust to a child. Not good. So Rosenbaum was released from prison in 2007. And again, she lives in Virginia, not in North Carolina. Some people are now coming up with a theory wherein Katie Proudfoot did not want Sebastian to go and live with his father, Seth Rogers. And so somehow, she contacted her estranged mother, I should say her rumored to be estranged mother, and arranged to have Sebastian nabbed by this estranged mother and hidden away to prevent Sebastian from going to live with Seth full time. And the people are saying that because Katie accused Seth of abusing Sebastian or using DV in the home against their son when they went through their contentious divorce, that this is why she would want to protect Sebastian from Seth. Seth has denied that he ever did any of that stuff, and I believe the case was closed, so it's unclear if he actually did any of that or not. I'm thinking that this theory is a possibility, but I'm not sure it's the most logical explanation for Sebastian's disappearance. It seems a bit elaborate, 
but a lot of people love these kind of theories. They love being sent down rabbit holes and chasing red herrings. I would hate to see this case descend into another Summerwell's debacle. Why can't we for once have a missing child from a family without scary skeletons in their closet? Sadly, I think this says a lot about the realities of life these days. Essay predators lurk among us, often in our neighborhoods, sometimes even in our own families. This crap is simply way too prevalent. And then we have fathers and mothers who sometimes become adversaries and they split up and have to deal with custody issues. And so often the children become pawns in the game and they're the ones who suffer the most. So while I'm saying this theory of the grandmother taking Sebastian, I'm saying that I find it not as plausible as maybe other theories, I have to admit that it is a possibility. I mean, we've seen so many cases lately where grandmothers have gotten involved in custody issues and done terrible things to gain custody because they want to control the grandchild. I mean, I can't deny it. Look at the two women in Kansas who died because of custody issues and a crazed grandmother. Veronica Butler and Jillian Kelly. And that nutter of a grandmother, Tiffany Adams. And who has a grandmother named Tiffany, by the way? Tiffany just sounds so youthful. Look at Donna Adelson, another crazed grandmother, allegedly you know, who got involved in this to get her grandchildren closer to her. But in Sebastian Rogers' case, we've got feuding parents, stepfather with a track record, allegedly, of having a big mouth. I mean, that's not allegedly, we know that. A callous nature, we also know that. And slap happy hands, who's been accused by at least one ex-wife of inflicting emotional and physical pain on that wife and on former and current children and stepchildren. I'm basing my assessment there of Chris Proudfoot on what his neighbors in Hendersonville, Tennessee allegedly said about him, as well as what his ex-wife Nina Gomez said. This is all allegedly, of course, because CP has never been charged with DV that I'm aware of, or convicted of it. So Chris, don't get your knickers all scrunched up. But of course, Chris hasn't done himself any favors by turning up on YouTube and displaying his temper and callousness. But to be fair, Katie Proudfoot has also accused Sebastian's father, Seth Rogers, of not so nice behavior when it came to Sebastian. Seth, of course, as I said earlier, claimed that Katie was making that stuff up, which may or may not be true. Oy vey. Now we learn that Katie's mother may be a registered S.O. with blonde hair who may resemble a woman in a photo featuring a kid who looks like a carbon copy of Sebastian but with darker hair. Let the sh show begin. Let's try not to let the sh show begin. Sebastian deserves better. Let's try to stick to the facts with uh, logical speculation, but nothing too cray-cray. That's all for now. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories, smash that like button and subscribe and share, yada, yada, yada.